Well, welcome everybody to um, the Institute of Physics uh, East Anglia branch lecture series. Uh, I'm Colin Ribson. I'm the, the chair of the East Anglia Committee for the IOP. Um, and we're looking forward to our lecture this evening, which is on Listen to Your Process uh, with uh, Federico Alberini and Francesco Maria Codicini, Codicino. Um, just a few things on housekeeping. Yes. Uh, if you've, you've got a question, type it in the Q&A box and we'll try to get round to all of them at the end of the talk. Um, the, the talk itself will last a uh, little under 40 minutes. We'll be, we'll be done by about eight o'clock, if not before. Uh, finally, this uh, lecture is being recorded and it will be uploaded to the, the IOP, what's called Region and Nations YouTube channel. Um, so you can enjoy that or share it with uh, your colleagues and friends in the future. Um, just to say a few words about our speakers. Um, the uh, company Rheology has, uh, um, Reality I should say rather, uh, is a spin out from uh, the University of Birmingham in the UK and has been developing a, a novel sensor technology for real time measurement of rheology in liquid manufacturing industries. And uh, our speakers this evening are the co inventor, Dr. Federico Alberini, uh, an acknowledged expert in rheology measurement, measurements and liquid um, product formulation. And um, also Dr. Federico um, Alberini will be joined by um, Dr. Francesco Maria Codicino, Reality's co-founder. Um, and uh, we look forward to their, their talk, listen to your process very much, and I hand over to them. Thank you. I'll see you later on for the Q&A. Thank you, Colin, for, uh, for the introduction and thank you for having us this evening. Uh, as you said, uh, Reality uh, is, a, is a startup and it has been out of the University of Birmingham. We are a young company incorporated in January 2020, so in the middle of the pandemic. Uh, um, and uh, the name is uh, clearly, clearly um, Rheology and real time reality, the, the reality of what, what go, goes on in a in a pipeline so we played with the with the wording here um i the presentation will have two parts one more let's say more technical led by federico and and the second part led by myself and then they will have the q a uh, so that's the format so uh federico please um go on go ahead okay if you share the screen with the presentation Oh yeah, that could be useful actually. Uh... Righty ho, and you see the main screen. Uh, I have to I have to screen, so I'm just making sure you're seeing the presentation screen. Yes, yeah, yeah, is the right one? Yes, and I'll try and click. Yeah. And okay. Here we go. Okay, I will tell you. So yeah, <clears throat> welcome uh, uh, to the talk. Uh, I'm uh, Federico Alberini um, and I'm one of the inventor of reality. So I'm going to uh, talk about what uh, reality is uh, and what uh, uh, reality is trying to achieve. So <clears throat> in terms of uh, uh, the application itself, uh, we are quite interesting on the uh, manufacturing of uh, liquid products. Um, we start obviously with the idea of uh, um, use this technique uh, uh, to, uh, to, to, to have something that was not, uh, let's say, available yet in the market. Um, <clears throat> because uh, what we know, uh, if you want to have a successful uh, uh, manufacturing uh, you need to have uh, four key components. One, obviously, um, a good uh, um, uh, a good final and consistent product, which sometimes uh, uh, can be quite challenging due to the variability, for example, of the raw material, but also of the process condition that uh, can be influenced by many different things. Um, obviously, a good manufacturing practice uh, is, is something that uh, you wish as well. And uh, one that we are really interested in trying to, to, to provide something more 
is uh, um, to have to to, to uh, achieve a, a, a nice and a, a very control uh, strategy to ensure this product consistency. With this, it sounds, uh, uh, <clears throat> let's say, obvious, but it's something that the industry sometimes is very challenging to achieve. And obviously, uh, have uh, built in redundancy and flexibility. So yeah, please change slide. Um, <clears throat> what, uh, what are the challenge in the manufacturing of liquid products? and uh, uh, in a way for, for, for reality, uh, the opportunities. Um, so when you uh, process liquid products, most of the time you have uh, very uh, complex uh, products, which are obviously made of different ingredients, sometimes different phases. And uh, obviously all these complex, uh, uh, let's say structure or microstructures, uh, basically give uh, the, 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 the final performance of the product and uh, obviously uh, is what uh, make uh, challenging the consistency of uh, mm, this product. Um, <clears throat> most of the time to um, control and measure this microstructure, obviously uh, there are a lot of analytical tools that are uh, employed to measure the different properties, for example, of the fluids, which could be obviously one of, we are interested in rheology, uh, others, there can be many others. Uh, however, uh, to achieve uh, such measurements, um, you need uh, a lot of time. And obviously the time is what uh, uh, in industry uh, is not uh, uh, available or is not uh, uh, in a way willing to waste. Um, and obviously uh, controlling uh, this uh, microstructure is really important because as, as I mentioned, we'll control the final, uh, the final uh, consistency of the product, which in a way is the macrostructure of the fluid. Um, obviously, the, the goal of reality is then uh, to do all these things uh, in line and online. And uh, how uh, this uh, can be done? Uh, obviously, as I mentioned, rheology is one uh, of uh, uh, the key measurements that can be used uh, to, to, to control uh, um, all these uh, linkage between the microstructure and the macrostructure. Please change the slide. So uh, to who is not familiar, uh, so rheology, uh, so from a textbook, uh, what it is, uh, is the study of the flow of matter. Uh, often um, viscosity is what most of the people knows. However, viscosity is not the only information that rheology uh, provides. Viscosity is, let's say, the rheological uh, parameter uh, that describes uh, a, par a particular class of fluids, uh, the Newtonian, only the Newtonian fluids. However, um, <clears throat> most of the real uh, liquid products, they don't fall in this class of fluids. So viscosity is not always the best parameter to describe, let's say, the rheology of uh, the, what are called non-Newtonian fluid. As I mentioned, generally, rheology is uh, a very time-consuming measurement uh, because uh, um, taking a sample, uh, going to the lab, uh, um, taking the measurements, uh, even if you are really good and very fast, cannot be done in less than 30 to one hour, 30 minutes to one hour. Uh, however, this measurement can provide uh, really rich information about the fluid. Um, and, but at the same time, in, uh, and this I'm talking for standard offline measurements, it can be challenging uh, 
in particular uh, when uh, um, fluid with a complex structure, so for example, fluid that has uh, uh, multi-phase, uh, a simple example can be an emulsion or uh, a fluid uh, which is aerated. In that case, those offline measurements can be quite challenging. And uh, what we are uh, trying to uh, achieve with, with re reality is to um, overcome all this problem and provide uh, information uh, about rheology for all types of liquid products. Please change. So how uh, <clears throat> the technology itself work? So the technology is, uh, uh, it's relative uh, um, simple from uh, the understanding point of view. So there is, uh, as you see, A is the, let's say the, the, the brain of the technology, uh, which basically inside there is uh, all the uh, hardware electronics. Um, then uh, the electronics is uh, simply uh, connect uh, to uh, a sensor, which is a piezoelectric sensor. And this piezoelectric sensor is placed on top uh, of uh, uh, a probe. Um, and this probe act uh, as, uh, uh, I would say, a sort of antenna um, that basically uh, capture uh, the measurement or the, let's say, the events that uh, happens inside the, the, the pipe that you can see uh, with the, uh, here at the bottom of the slide. Um, and then you can imagine that the fluid comes in from B and going out from E. Um, and uh, uh, basically the, the, just the flowing of, the, of, the, of this fluid that we are interested inside the, this uh, uh, pipe section, hitting our uh, probe, uh, provide these uh, rheological measurements. The uh, great uh, advantage, obviously, is that uh, the sensing part uh, is never in contact with the liquid. And uh, this is uh, allowed us to work uh, with uh, pretty much uh, uh, most of the type, or most of the um, aggressive uh, uh, fluids uh, that uh, can be used because the uh, material of the probe um, can be made uh, uh, exactly with the same material of the piping, um, despite uh, uh, is, uh, is a metal. So please change <clears throat> the slide. So um, the, the other good thing of the, the technology, so we uh, use uh, this sensor technology that is, uh, is a well-established technology, so it's not uh, a completely new sensor, so it's a, a passive acoustic sensor, which often is confused uh, with ultrasound. Um, so the main difference is with ultrasound, uh, there is a, a receiver and uh, a detector. With the passive acoustic, uh, uh, what you have, you mainly have only a detector. So you uh, overcome uh, uh, all the uh, problematics uh, that you have with ultrasound. Um, the technology is quite plug and play because at the end, uh, as you've seen uh, in the previous slide, uh, you can fit easily in any pipeline. You just need to, um, <clears throat> to change a small piece of pipe with the uh, pipe uh, provided uh, uh, by us with the probe. Uh, it's relative low capex and opex requirements. And uh, so uh, it makes use of big data that we are going to talk uh, in the next few slides. 
And obviously our aim uh, is to basically provide a technology that can enhance the, the, the industry 4.0. Uh, please change. So <clears throat> to uh, simply uh, explain uh, the, 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 the basic principle of the uh, technology, so I, I uh, decide uh, uh, to basically uh, show you some uh, uh, simple uh, um, computational fluid dynamics that uh, uh, we have done uh, uh, with colleagues uh, um, of the Ampeca uh, team uh, of the University of Birmingham. So what we've done, uh, we uh, simulate uh, the flow inside uh, uh, the pipe section uh, that I showed you um, before. And uh, uh, we basically um, try to, uh, yeah, uh, to, to provide a physical uh, uh, interpretation of what is going on uh, uh, on the measurement itself. So please change. So imagine the, 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 uh, the, this image correspond to the um, cross section, the, 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 the section of the pipe that I show you before exactly in the middle. So as you can see from the left is where the uh, fluid is coming in in the pipe. Then the uh, white uh, um, rectangle is the uh, part of uh, the, the probe that uh, um, is, uh, uh, is, is uh, extruding inside the, the, the pipe section. And uh, um, what uh, uh, we basically uh, got from this study is uh, <clears throat> what we basically believe uh, was happening in, in, the, in the measurement itself. So uh, what happens is the, uh, the fluid flow uh, hits uh, the, 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 let's say, the, the probe inside the, the pipe. And uh, obviously, uh, if uh, um, you remember, uh, if you've done any of the uh, basic fluid dynamics in your studies, um, so the, <clears throat> the fluid flow is uh, uh, pretty... Uh, dependent of the um, apparent viscosity or more generally the rheology of the fluid uh, that is flowing inside the pipe. So in simple word, uh, what happens is the distribution of the velocity that in this uh, uh, slide is represented by the different uh, uh, colors uh, change according to the uh, rheology of the fluid that is flowing inside the pipe. This is what it means. It means that then uh, um, the uh, flow uh, that is developed uh, in the proximity of the probe is, uh, uh, let's say, a specific uh, to the uh, type uh, of uh, fluid that is flowing. And this is, is uh, uh, basically translated uh, in uh, uh, different uh, distribution that you can see on the, um, on the right uh, bottom side of the slide, uh, different distribution of pressure on the face, in this case of this uh, square uh, probe. And this is, is what uh, generate uh, uh, the, the, the signal uh, for our sensor. So please change slide. And uh, so if we, if we see uh, this uh, process in, uh, in a transient state, so in, in time, um, for example, and we uh, in a way measure the, uh, uh, the average uh, pressure on the area that I show you uh, before, you could see that this pressure oscillate uh, quite a lot in time. And this is uh, practically it's what uh, generate uh, uh, the signal uh, that uh, our sensor reads. 
Okay, please change. So uh, these are uh, on the uh, top right, you can see a, a snapshot of an example of the row, row, row data uh, generated uh, by the sensor. So it's, uh, it's basically a classical voltage sensor uh, in, in time. Uh, <clears throat> obviously, uh, this signal is uh, is a quite is a very rich uh, signal with a lot of information, and uh, in particular because the uh, technology that we use uh, is uh, is a multi frequency sensor. So we record uh, uh, up to five hundred thousand hertz. So we have a quite a wide uh, range of frequency uh, of measurement. And uh, um, this is why <clears throat> I am showing on the bottom the same, uh, uh, the same uh, uh, data in a frequency regime. Um, and basically, all this information, obviously, uh, are very rich, but uh, uh, at the same time, uh, are very heavy. So what we can do with this such information, please go change. Uh, we uh, develop uh, um, this uh, um, uh, uh, spec, uh, let's say, uh, reality outputs, uh, which we call reality uh, real, uh, rheological factor, RRF. And what they are uh, is, uh, is a simple sequence of parameters uh, that basically are used uh, uh, to describe the, um, the complex, rich, and heavy uh, frequency distribution data that uh, uh, the raw data uh, are provided by the sensor. This uh, uh, sequence is uh, is uh, uh, a way to uh, basically identify uh, the rheological fingerprint uh, uh, of uh, the, the desired liquid that we are analyzing. And these uh, 10 parameters uh, can be used uh, um, in, uh, in, in a much, let's say, easy way because you, uh, you can think about that uh, uh, the first uh, uh, row measurements is uh, for each instant uh, in time, uh, we are talking about uh, uh, 500,000 data. And these 500,000 data are reduced in 10 parameters. So also from a computational point of view, these uh, uh, is open a lot of doors. Uh, please change. Um, <clears throat> so to explain the uh, rheological, uh, um, uh, the reality rheological factor, you can think about uh, uh, a DNA sequencing. So you know that uh, uh, every one of us has a different DNA sequencing, and then, but then uh, there are not uh, infinity uh, nucleic uh, acid. So it's just uh, a sequence of this nucleic acid. And the RRF in a way is similar. So we have uh, these 10 parameters uh, that uh, they can have a different intensity, uh, but uh, the, the, the combination of uh, different intensity uh, describe uh, a particular uh, uh, rheological fingerprint. And this information can be used live and in line pretty quickly. Okay. Um, so the advantage of using the rheological re reality factor is then that uh, these uh, um, raw reality measurements can be fed uh, easily uh, to uh, machine learning algorithm to train uh, um, because obviously uh, we, we, we face uh, that different consumers have different needs. So, so no 
No, not all wants to have a, a rheological characterization of their fluids, but they want uh, a specific uh, uh, process parameter to be identified. So we can uh, use uh, uh, machine learning algorithm feeding our uh, RRF data to uh, convert uh, to a specific uh, uh, output. Um, at the same time, because the, 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 the amount of information is not huge, even uh, the, 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 the raw rheological real, reality factor can be used potentially in a process control system because it's like, uh, in a way, to have uh, uh, 10 temperature or 10 pressure, but it's, it's just 10, 10 parameters. Um, and the good thing is uh, uh, there is a drastic reduction of the amount of, inf of information, but uh, uh, there is not... Uh, uh, a proportional uh, um, lose of the richness of this uh, uh, information itself. Please change. And uh, yeah, coming to the, my last uh, slide, and then uh, I will uh, give the, 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 <clears throat> the uh, privilege to, to Francesco to continue the, 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 the presentation. So what uh, uh, I would like uh, uh, to conclude uh, from my part is, so what the reality is aiming is to provide uh, a, a smart sensing uh, that basically uh, can provide uh, uh, to the industry uh, a real sensor that can really enhance uh, the industry 4.0. This is, is because reality can provide a lot of information. Um, it's not only about rheology, uh, can provide others that uh, uh, in a way are uh, uh, directly linked uh, uh, to the rheology. Um, and uh, what we aim is to provide uh, a, a technology that has uh, an efficient communication. So we, we are... Uh, um, aiming to provide a technology that uh, can be used uh, um, obviously with standard communication but also with more advanced through cloud or through wireless uh, um, and uh, in a way we our aim is also to help the industry uh, to um, do this this change because there is a lot of talk about industry 4.0 but when then we talk about implementation is not uh, as straightforward uh, as it looks like. So I think is as as company we we are closely work with the the clients and uh, and helping them also uh, to 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 do this uh, this step change because at the end is a big step change. Okay, Francesco, I leave you because I think is I, I I took uh, enough of my time. Yeah, thank you, thank you, uh, and uh, I'll continue with a with a more general view of of the technology. So we, when we were thinking on how to also sort of explain or position ourselves uh, compared to others, uh, basically we ended up with this uh, sort of pyramid, uh, and uh, uh, we because these are the different layers or the, let's say the different levels of 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 uh, of parameters uh, metrics that, that or characteristics that uh, uh, characterize uh, uh, reality uh, with respect to in this case for example viscometer actually there is a uh, there is a, a, a mistake here it's not offline but they are online uh, so uh, basically here we we made a comparison with uh, uh, two two other uh, um, let's say uh, 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 device, device providers and uh, basically uh, when um, uh, they can I mean they are generally good at providing uh, value of viscosity in this uh, in this band here so with a sort of accuracy which can also be uh, not exactly uh, to the point but when we start moving up uh, in terms of 
just viscosity. We we can provide viscosity measurements, and they as viscometers, they can only provide viscosity measurement. But we can also provide all the rest of, of the scale. So we can move and up to rheology. We can be used in any pipe with any scale. Uh, so that the size doesn't matter. We are not restricted by size. Can, we are not restricted by the fluid regimen. So we can also be used in turbulent uh, regimen. Uh, we are fluid agnostic, so it can be multiphase, can be Newtonian and non-Newtonian, and uh, and uh, as as mentioned by Federico, it's is a not is a touchless technology, so the, the the sensor part is is external to the fluid, so uh, that uh, in a way simplifies uh, uh, operationally uh, many things, and uh, we are multi-feature, so the single sensor can actually provide more than one measure probably just because the richness of the of the signal allows us to extract different features okay so it can be viscosity and rheology for example okay not just one sensor one measure but one sensor multi features so in in, in terms of other inline rheology um uh, measurement devices again now the two competitors here and, uh, and that's again through the scale where they are position so uh, uh, basically they uh, they can get rheology in line but they again are limited to lamina uh, regimen uh, when they move up with sizes and we'll see with other slides later when would they move up to, to, to sizes of the of the pipe or um, in in other with fluids which are multiphase or with regimen which is turbulent then things don't apply to those uh, uh, other devices while we go again the full length. So we are fluid agnostic, size agnostic, uh, regimen agnostic, and and, uh, and and so forth. So I, I just explored a little bit of this of these concepts now. So of course, the pre the 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 the, the, the immediate the immediate let's say the the first feature is shifting measurements from sampling uh, offline and measuring offline to inline. So we go from a process that can in a very <laughs> in a very skilled and, and fast environment can take half an hour every time they they want to take a measurement to up two hours of 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 uh, of uh, measuring time uh, offline to and by the second measurement so real time inline real time measurement so that's one first feature and characteristic the other one as, as i mentioned I mentioned already so the the second part is um is the, is uh, um is actually outside uh the 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 the, the, the fluid environment so we don't we we don't we have not so there is no complications with with the sensing uh, with the sensor that can be used, so we can go inside the pipe with any material. So it can be the same material of the pipe we, of the process we are we're dealing with. There is less maintenance, so every, any, everything is if any is plug and play. So we can deal with the piping system uh, alone or with this electronic part alone, uh, depending on with the maintenance needed. And and again, there is no we are not affected by the type of fluid so there is no clogging there is no um, if, if it's an, a, a harsh environment with high ph we are not uh, affected by this so there are lots of uh, 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 um, benefits to being outside and we we know that uh, um, other instruments have, uh, have instead this type of problems of clogging and 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 uh, sensor replacement and damaging etc uh, the other accuracy so basically here when we go and consider single continuous phase continuous phase fluids again the, the offline compared the offline competitors beside the, the issue with, with, with times of, of those measurements uh yeah they can uh, this is a, just a symbol to say yeah they can do it uh for for what concerns the inline other technologies that are available again they can be restricted or by the type of fluid they can operate so they need for example one needs a conductive fluid to work in both situations so when it's single phase or multi-phase um uh, the other one can work in single phase but cannot work in multi-phase well, well again uh, we are agnostic 
an agnostic to that. So we can work with single phase fluids and multi phase fluids. Again, multi phase, we are currently working with up to four phases where is, there is gas, water, um, uh, a viscous oil, and, uh, and uh, also particulates of um, solids. Uh, so this is just again a representation of, of complex multi phase fluids. Um, uh, again, in terms of uh, size and 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 uh, fluid regimen, uh, uh, everyone can work lamina. When it goes to the turbulent, doesn't the other technologies don't apply? And in terms of sizing, it doesn't matter for us really. So there are restrictions on on the other technologies. Uh, they have upper limits. We're working now on the highest, the 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 the, the biggest. Uh, uh, size we are working with at the moment is 10 inches but again going higher it wouldn't be a problem um, and this is also to give you an overview of uh, uh, the trials you are involved in at the moment uh, so we have uh, and this is also a testimony of the um, the fact, the fact we are fluid agnostics uh, and fluid and agnostic to also working conditions. We have uh, trials in these different sectors and uh, uh, already working in Europe, UK and, and the US. Okay. This is just to give you an idea of the reality <laughs> of reality. Uh, and this is the uh, oil and gas application and that site is the same site 24 hours apart. So this was a Wednesday and it was a Thursday of the same week. Uh, it was March in Wyoming. So in the desert, it was one day, it was sunny and dry. The second day <laughs> was uh, snowy. But this is the environment we're working in and, uh, and we, are, we are currently um, applying the technology to it. Um, so in, in summary, and that's uh, the last slide really, uh, um, or probably, let me, Probably, yeah, it's, uh, it's, um, it's reality is, is a smart sensor that, that is capable of measuring multiple features, is in line, is in real time, is retrofitable, so it's easy to install, to install, is ubiquitous, so potentially, I mean, uh, uh, it, it can be used in many points of the same production line to map out the process, uh, stage by stage, is machine learning, based uh, so it learns and becomes more accurate with time so offers the perfect combination of flexibility and adaptability and accuracy so i think that's the yeah that's the end and uh i will welcome any question uh and please thank you Thank you very much, uh, Francesco and, and Federico as well. <clears throat> I've got a, 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 a few questions um, I can ask you. Um, perhaps um, if I could start with you, Federico. Um, you mentioned about training of a machine learning algorithm. Um, is that specific for each uh, use, each different application, different type of uh, a mixture of fluids and, and solids and so on? And, uh, and is your device um, self-learning in an application? Does it, does it remember what's good and what's bad and then recognize it in, in the future? Yes, yeah, so I think it's generally, so the machine learning and we use uh, obviously to uh, derive, uh, let's say, uh, indirect measurements uh, relate to the rheology. Uh, and uh, yes, yeah, so the system obviously uh, more, uh, uh, more things uh, see, more uh, uh, clever uh, becomes. Um, and uh, obviously uh, it's a continuous learning and the other things that uh, uh, we are uh, working is obviously um, if in a way to use uh, uh, this technology uh, to provide uh, a, a way uh, to derive uh, uh, some uh, uh, predictive model because we, we, we can uh, as Francesco and myself uh, uh, stress out, so we, we, can, uh, uh, we can record a lot of information at the same time, uh, but obviously uh, all those information we, 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 we cannot, uh, uh, let's say, immediately understand uh, 
to what uh, uh, they might uh, depend. But with time and with uh, uh, recording, all those information can be stored and used uh, as a library to understand what is going on uh, in the process and recognize when things uh, happen again and possibly understand uh, what was wrong in the process. Right, that's great. I was going to have a, <clears throat> a follow-on question for you, which was um, these, this sequence of, uh, of 10 parameters. Mm -hmm. What are they and how do you derive them? But I, th I think I know what your answer is going to be to that. But I've got a, a much more clever question from uh, a potential customer of yours, actually, or somebody I know who works in the oil and gas industry. He asks, um, does the, do the RRF parameters relate to any physical meaningful parameters? So um, itself, uh, uh, they are related to physical uh, parameters, yes. But uh, yeah, I cannot, uh, I cannot say more than that. <laughs> And, uh, and also the following question is, um, uh, you have to uh, have flow and shear to generate sound. Mm -hmm. Are you at all sensitive to yield stress or gel properties? So <clears throat> this is, is uh, other things that we, uh, we are trying to uh, investigate uh, in terms of, uh, I think is potentially uh, uh, I think is the aim is to be able to 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 measure uh, such effect because obviously such properties of the fluid will affect drastically the fluid flow. So uh, and and then yes, uh, I think is in a way in a good way, not in the bad way. So I think is uh, um, the aim is is to uh, be able to to track when, for example, the gelification happen in a, in a specific fluid, because obviously the, 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 um, the pressure field will change dramatically and the, 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 the sensor will read a completely different signal. So that's a, a characteristic which you can use rather than something that hinders you as such. Yeah. <clears throat> Great. And I've got a, a question for Francesco as well. Um, given that um, there's not really been a way to do this in many industries um, prior to this type of device. How quickly or how ready do you find industry to adopt the idea of using real time control when previously they've had to just use batches and test that the batch is good? Uh, OK, so I, the idea of what we experienced is that the idea is immediately appealing to them. So they, they, there is a strong need and they know there is a strong need. Uh, there is, however, as you said, uh, <laughs> there is an inertia due to their equipment and also cultural inertia on, 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 on any change, right? They, they, yeah. So what we are doing at the moment is a set of trials that uh, uh, gives them uh, the in, in a small with a relatively small budget gives them the confidence that if they have to move a, towards a bigger step they have the the rational and the motivation to do so certainly uh, we kind of fitting into the strategic pillars in many for many industries which is digitization before innovation and uh, and, uh, and um, optimization optimization of the production lines uh, so um, so we we fit into quite a few streams of of strategic importance uh, so that's why there is a, a sort of sensitivity to what we propose and there is a willingness to to, to, to give it a try. Yeah. Uh, so at the moment that's the entry door is, 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 is through the trial, but that shows the way to, to look beyond. They are, they are looking beyond what they are doing at the moment. Right. Of course, changes by sector by sector. Uh, so there are more sectors which are more conservative uh, and sectors which are more uh, uh, um, uh, uh, kind of uh, projected to the future. Uh, and we can see that, but uh, overall, yeah, there is, there is an attention to what can be done better. Yeah, no, it's an interesting area. Um, another question here, um, do you take any measurements to deal with interfering noise sources um, in, the, in the pipelines? 
yeah <clears throat> so yeah that is is uh, often the sort of first question and i think is that is uh, in a way is uh, it's dealt with the uh, rrf so it's uh, because uh, as i mentioned the raw, raw data is a very rich uh, uh, data set and uh, uh, and this a multi frequency uh, measurement so the noise uh, in a way can be located uh, uh, pretty quickly oh. that's great so yes yeah okay so you can you can cancel it out by the analysis yeah. method that you're using effectively yeah yeah, yeah. That's good. Well, I haven't uh, got any more questions in the box at the moment. So I think um, I'd just say thank you to Federico and Francesco for um, joining us this evening. And thank, thank you, everybody, for, for joining the, uh, the seminar. Um, we'd love to have you come and join us for upcoming events. Um, and there are many other events, of course, hosted by other regions and, and nations of the Institute of Physics. Just visit the events.iop.org website. Um, and head to iop.org if you're interested in becoming a member or learning more about the Institute of Physics and what it what it does uh, around the world. Um, and look out there also for our, our next talk. There's also a quick survey at the end of this. I know everyone likes to click away from them, but please do leave some feedback. We're always interested to hear uh, if anyone's got any suggestions as to how they'd, they'd like to, the events to be different or to change um, in, in how we uh, organize them. Um, so, um, from me and uh, from Federico and Francesco, thank you very much, and um, we'll see you next time. Bye bye for now. Take care. Thank, thank you. Bye bye. Good evening. Bye. -bye.